Hi, my name is Aubrey Millard. Welcome to this 3D Evolutions tutorial on modeling and illuminating a table lamp in 3DS Max. Here you can see we have a selection of lamps and they look pretty good but they're missing a little something and what we want to do is we want to light them up. So, we'll begin. Fire up 3DS Max into your render setup. Make sure under the common tab that you actually have V-Ray set up as your render engine. Otherwise you won't be able to do anything that we uh, were doing in this tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to first model a light, a lamp, using a spline modeling method. So select line under the create panel and we're going to draw out the basic shape of our lamp. Go along and start adding vertices. Don't be too worried about where you put them at first because we can go back in later on and adjust them. Once you have what you think is a decent shape, we can go in under the Modify panel select vertex sub mode and go in and adjust some of the vertices that we created. Now you can see how I've lined up the inner edge along this black line. That just gives me a reference point for when we actually uh, apply the lathe modifier and extrude it out a little bit later. Go in and create an interesting shape. Use some of the tools that are available in 3ds Max. Until you get something that you're happy with. Once you have your shape drawn out, up under the Modify panel, Scroll down until you see the lathe modifier and apply that. Now, to bring it out, there's one of two ways we can do it. We can either select axis and we can pull it out this way to whatever shape we want. Or we can go down under the parameters rollout and under the align panel, select max. And that'll pop it out there. Make sure you have 360 degrees because we want a complete circle and have weld core selected. Under segments, yours are probably going to default at 18, but we want a nice smooth, so I'm going to bump it up to 36. If you want to go back in, after you've applied the lathe modifier and change anything, you can go back down into vertex sub mode, and if you want to see in real time what you're doing, click on this button that says show end result, and then as you modify the different vertices, you can actually see how it's affecting the object. Now we have our, uh, once you're happy with the shape, right click and then go to collapse all. And then make sure you convert it to an editable poly. So far that's looking pretty good. Now what we'll do is we have our lamp part created. We're going to go in and we're going to create the actual lamp shade. This time in using, instead of using a spline um, modeling method, we're just going to use a basic geometry shape and we're going to use the tube. So in your top viewport, Try and get into the center of the lamp. Select your left mouse button and drag out the outer circumference. Once you get it where you think it's big enough, let go of the left mouse button and now we're going to 
create the inner circumference. Don't make it too thick. We want a fairly thin lampshade. Click the left mouse button again, and now this time scroll up so that we can drag out some height. We'll take and we'll put our lampshade up in place. Under the modifier tab, you can change any of the radiuses, or the height, segments. Now I've left segments at three because I'm going to create some edges in a minute. And again, we want a fairly nice round shape, so I've set the segments at 32. Once you're happy with the general layout of the lampshade, again, collapse it to an editable poly. Now I'm going to go into vertex sub mode and I'm going to marquee select this row of vertices and I'm going to move them up. I'm going to select this row and I'm going to move them down. Because basically what I want to do is I want to create a ridge for the top and bottom of the lampshade. Now, it looks okay, but I don't want a completely cylindrical lampshade on this one. I want to give it a more interesting look, a more interesting profile. So I'm going to marquee select all the vertices across the top. I'm going to take the scale tool and I'm going to scale the top of the lampshade in to give it a more interesting profile. Now that we've pretty much gotten the modeling done for our basic lamp, we're going to uh, create the actual light. So again from the Create panel, under Lights, select V-Ray Lights, and then we'll create a V-Ray Light. Make sure that its type is set to Sphere. Yours will probably default at Plane. Again, from the top viewport, in the center of the light, Create it and drag it out a little bit bigger than a normal light bulb. And we'll put that up in place. And under the modify parameters, under the multiplier, depending on your scene, the uh, materials you're using, and other lighting, you might have to play with the multiplier to get uh, the lighting effect that you want. But for this, we're just going to leave it at what it is now, which is 40. So now that we've got all the basic geometry done, we'll throw a few textures on it and see how it looks. So open up your material editor by clicking this button or pressing the letter M. Now I've got a few textures that I've already created just to save ourselves some time. So first we'll add a texture or a material to our uh, lamp. And then we'll go to our lampshade. Now these ridges that I created earlier, I'm going to marquee select those polygons. And I'm going to add that material. And again, I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom. And then for the main part of the lampshade, we're going to create a material. So make sure that you have a V-Ray material selected under the diffuse slot. We'll just add a uh, bitmap. We'll give it a basic fabric texture to start off. And then we are going to assign that to our lampshade. So we have our basic lamp set up now and we'll do a quick render to see how uh, everything looks and I'm gonna pause this while we do the render so it doesn't take up too much time. Okay so now our render is finished and we can see our lamp with the light and we've got light coming from the top and light coming from the bottom but there's nothing shining through our actual lampshade and that's what we're gonna fix next. So again open up the material editor 
and this time select a blank slot and instead of a V-Ray material we're going to select a V-Ray two-sided material. Take the texture that we created earlier for the lampshade and drag it down into the front slot of the V-Ray two-sided material. Just leave it as an instance, that way you can modify any, uh, any parameters that you want in the other window. Don't worry about the back material, we're not going to use that. The important part here is the translucency color swatch. Click on the color swatch to bring it up. Now, the way that this works is the darker the color, the more opaque the material is going to be. The lighter the color, the more translucent the material is going to be. Now again, depending on the geometry and your uh, materials that you're using and your lighting, you might have to play around with this a bit to get the uh, effect that you're looking for. But for this, we'll keep it at uh, a light gray. Select OK. Now we'll again go in and we'll apply that texture that we just created to our lampshade. We'll bring up our render window and we'll create a clone so that we can compare the two when we're done. And again, I will pause it while we do another render. Okay, so this was the render that we did prior to adding the V-Ray two-sided two material. And after having added the V-Ray two-sided material, this is what we end up with. So you can see we still have the light coming from up top and down below, but now we actually have the glow of the light coming through the fabric of the lamp shade. Again, you can play around with all the different settings to try and get uh, different types of effects more translucency, less light, things like that. Anyhow, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you learned something, and thanks for joining us. Again, my name is Aubrey Millard. Have a good day.